I wanted to go over the project I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is a Z80 computer that I built just out of chips and it looks kind of like a rat's nest, but I'm hoping to eventually get it moved on to an actual printed circuit board and look a little better and be a little more permanent. But what we have here is down here is the Z80, which you can barely see, but it's a DIP40 package. And then over here, we have a 512K uh, SRAM chip. Um, and that is really all there is that's part of, you know, a traditional Z80 system. Uh, all the ROM, the IO, everything else, has been replaced with this uh, Atmega 1284P uh, microcontroller, which has a little help from a few other chips. This is a flip-flop that has a set and reset. Um, this allows the Atmega to handle the I.O. request from the, uh, from the Z80, because otherwise, it wouldn't be able to respond fast enough to satisfy the Z80's timing constraints. So what happens is the Z80 makes an I.O. request that comes over here. That triggers the flip-flop immediately to say wait. Um, and then that I.O. request also comes over here to the Atmega. The Atmega, as soon as it notices it, handles it, and then it sets the I.O. acknowledge pin here which tells the flip-flop to deassert the weight signal, which allows the Z80 to pick up again. Um, aside from that, uh, there's not enough I.O. on this, even though it's a DIP40, there's not enough I.O. to really have handle all the buses from the Z80. So I've got the data bus that's white here and the address bus, the lower eight bits uh, that's yellow going directly to the Atmega. And then the uh, upper eight bits of the address bus here in green are going to an IO expander from microchip. It's an MCP23S18, uh, I think, which actually the 17 would have been better because this is an open collector version, but I made it work uh, because that's what I accidentally ordered. Okay, so aside from that, we have um, a bunch of control signals, um, things like memory requests, IO requests, read and write, uh, go directly into the Atmega. Uh, you have M1 over here, which signals an opcode fetch. Um, you have halt which is when the Z80 has executed a halt instruction. Um, also, this yellow, uh, orange wire along the bottom here is the clock uh, generated by PWM from the Atmega. Um, actually, when the clock, uh, when an I.O. request comes in, the Atmega stops the hardware-generated clock and manually bit bangs the clock uh, while it handles the I.O. request. So it slows down a little bit while an I.O. request is happening, but it allows it to do the the really tight timing constraints that are necessary during that phase. Um, over here, we have some more control signals that were not, uh, there weren't enough pins for on the Atmega. We have, uh, Interrupt, NMI, reset, uh, bus request, and bus acknowledge. And then over here are these three orange wires are the bank selections for the uh, 512K RAM. Since the Z80 can only access six, 640K, um, I'm sorry, 64K, uh, you have actually eight times more than that on this chip. And so with three bits, you have eight banks that you can select and the Atmega controls that as well. Um, aside from that, we have a reset button, the clock for the Atmega. This is SPI control lines that go over here to the um, 
IO expander and over here to a level shifter which switches from 5 to 3 volts and then goes to an SD card and right here is a 3 volt power supply for the SD card. Uh, here this is a halt button that um, in addition to detecting when the Z80 halts due to a halt instruction you can prematurely halt it by pressing a halt button. This is the reset for the um, for the Atmega, and then over here is the um, sort of FTDI cable. It's actually a Silicon Labs version, but it's a serial to USB chip. Um, here you have uh, this is uh, transmit and receive, and then this is the reset line, which goes to the DTR pin on the um, serial chip through a capacitor and that's kind of the standard uh, Arduino reset circuit and I'm using an Arduino bootloader on here I'm not actually using Arduino libraries or the Arduino IDE but the bootloader allows me to program this through the um, through the serial uh, converter and I can actually do a reset trigger a reset from AVR dude when I'm trying to do the actual programming so that's pretty much it for the hardware. Um, I will pick up in a minute with the software and give a little demo of that. But um, yeah, uh, I've already got it running CPM. I've got it, uh, it's emulating an Altair disk drive. Um, and I've been able to run pretty much all the software that uh, is available for the SimH project as well as the Altair clone project, which um, is an actual Altair look-alike that has a modern em microchip emulating the 8080 inside. So uh, the way I've implemented the disk emulation using the SD card, it's able to actually run all of that software without any modification.